Good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Pia, and today is October 12th, 2021 at 6.45 p.m. I'm gonna to call to order the regularly scheduled Town Council Public Forum. Um, as always, for, for everyone in attendance, uh, Stratford residents and business owners are allowed three minutes, and I'm gonna go in order, and as I call your name when you come to the microphone, you could just state your name for the record, as well as your address, and uh, we'll give you three minutes. So the first person on our list is uh, Kathleen Callahan. Hello, my name is Kathleen Callahan, and I live in the 10th District at 271 Castle Drive. Uh, good evening, and thank you, Honorable Chair Pia, and the other distinguished members of the Town Council for the time to speak. I'm here to share my thoughts on Remington Woods. As you all know, this land is primarily located in Bridgeport, with 18% in Stratford, including the entrance off Broadbridge Avenue, the office park, and the parking lot. When I moved to Stratford in 2010, I worked for a consulting firm that contracted for Sikorsky and was located in the office building site. Uh, I just jumped off an ongoing call right now with Corteva regarding the update on rem remediation. So I'm glad I could get here to share this. I am quite sure that my thoughts on this land align with my councilwoman, Laura Dancho, as I support this area as an urban forest to protect what I believe is the largest undeveloped open space in Fairfield County. I decided to speak tonight after Bridgeport Zoning Commission released the agenda for their scheduled meeting tomorrow. That meeting was canceled yesterday, but I wanted to take the opportunity to share anyway. My understanding is that our Zoning Commission has not discussed this property recently, but any votes they take arrive here to the Council. I am not aware of how the two municipalities work together on co-located co land and whether what they do necessarily impacts what we do here, but I do know that what they do surely impacts Stratford. In 2019, the Plan Bridgeport report stated, coordinate with neighboring and regional planning bodies to advance the cleanup and reuse of Remington Woods Lake Success property as a regional site that has significant urban forest component. As a growing city, conservation and the protection of nature should be a priority for Bridgeport. Even though it is largely built out, as are we, the city is presented with opportunities to protect and enhance open space and natural resources. Significant areas such as the Remington Woods Lake Success property present the city with a chance to increase its publicly accessible open space and protected natural habitat. I couldn't agree more, but was concerned by Bridgeport's newly proposed zoning map that did not designate the parcel as a park and open space, but rather a residential office center, which are more intense locations where residential office and other commercial and production uses can mix comfortably. In addition to the environmental ben benefits for the wildlife, we humans gain much from preserving and protecting this jewel. Enhancing clean water and air, addressing climate change, reducing alarming asthma rates, and providing an outdoor respite, something desperately needed in these days, are a few reasons why we should avoid the tragedy of destroying these woods. Monitoring the remediation and working with the developer, the city of Bridgeport, environmental conservation groups, and advocates, our town leadership can ensure the best use of this land for us all. I thank you for much for your time. Thank you. Next on the list, uh, Tim Bristol. Uh, thank you, uh, Council Chair and uh, Council Members. My name is Tim Bristol. I live at Nine Ridge Road in the 7th District. Uh, I've been a resident of Stratford for several years, and I own and operate a food truck known as the Melting Truck. Uh, my business has been in operation since December 2020, um, and I have followed every town regulation, jumped through every hoop that was required of me to get my food truck operational in town. I would consulted town ordinances, the police department, the zoning commission, as to where I could operate my food truck in town. I was operating my food truck at the Bird's Eye Boat Launch until February uh, 2020, I'm sorry, February 2021, and was told by a member of the Waterfront Management Commission that I could not operate there despite approval from the police department and the zoning commission. Uh, this upsets me because it's basically the only place I can operate my food truck in town <coughs> without violating zoning regulations 
or paying a considerable fee. Um, so now my options, or my options have been, to not operate or not operate in town. Uh, I do most of my business in Trumbull and in the Valley. Uh, I've made considerable efforts to support my local business community and working with other vendors, the Shakespeare Market, and charitable organizations like the Lord's Kitchen. I request that the town address this issue, as I'm not the only food truck in town who's dealing with this. Uh, Stratford's policy regarding food trucks is outdated and anti-business. I suggest a policy that designates a few places in town where food trucks can operate with a permit, as other towns do this, like Milford, Trumbull, Bridgeport, the Valley. Um, I would gladly pay for this permit and the opportunity to operate my food truck in town. And I have a part two. The other issue I want to address is the public forum for the town council meetings. <clears throat> if you want to make a public comment at town council, you must sign up at 6.30, a full hour and a half before the actual meeting. Public comment starts at 6.45, and if you don't make that 15 minute window, you don't get to make a comment. This was obviously designed to limit public participation and disenfranchise those who want to air grievances at town meetings. But that is not all. Even if you make the period, and you sign up, you're only allotted three minutes to speak. I find this disappointing as the council is putting themselves in a bubble. This is not how to gain public trust and how to create participation from the town. Town council meetings should be a forum for public interaction in an official setting. Public comment should be a part of the meeting agenda during the actual meeting, not an hour and a half before the meeting. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who is here and present that would like, that did not have the opportunity to sign up, that would like to sign up and speak? Come to the microphone and you could state your name and address for the record. Linda. Good evening, Linda Palermo, <coughs> 46 Vought Place. We, we gotta keep the mask on. Vought Linda. Place. Linda, we got to keep the mask on. Pardon? We have to keep the mask on. Oh, while I'm talking? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I lost my trend of thought. <laughs> Recently, I had to write to Lieutenant Governor of the State of Connecticut to present to him an issue that <clears throat> where I saw a lot of things going on that shouldn't be going on. I'm now doing a backup to him and I'm giving him further information. I don't know if it, it'll be investigated. I'm sure it will be investigated and I hope it will be investigated. There's a lot of people that are hoping that we could get low income housing into Stony Brook and it started out being low interest back when I moved in there in uh, 17, I'm sorry, 1972. When I moved in there, I was paying $85 a month for roof and occupancy. What I'm paying nowadays is a lot more. And part of what I've taken to the Lieutenant Governor is because I've been scammed a great deal of money. I've been told that uh, I had to pay a late fee and they kept taking the late fee out of my carrying charges I went to the bank and I had an audit done and they said, you're fine, you're paying your account two to three days in advance of the due date. So whatever comes of it, I hope it will happen and it will be for the good of the people of Stratford, not just for Linda Palermo. And for anyone that's running, I wish you the very best of luck. Keep smiling, thank you. Thank you, Linda. 
Anybody else who has not had the opportunity to speak? Seeing none, I'm going to call the public forum closed at 6.55. We'll reconvene at 8 p.m. sharp for the town council right here. Thank you all. Okay, good evening, everybody. Got a full house tonight. Thank you for joining us. My name is Christopher Pia, and I'm the chairman for the Stratford Town Council. Today is October 12th, 2021. It is 8 p.m. sharp, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda, excuse me, the first item will be the invocation and pledge, and I will give that if everyone could please stand. Dear Father, I pray that as leaders lead your people, I pray that they will not do it selfishly for personal ambition or vain conceit. I pray that you help leaders to realize that leading is really a task that requires them to serve. Help them to work in humility, make them a selfish vessel of you. In your image, amen. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the regularly scheduled meeting of September 13th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. O'Brien, I have a second. Second, Dave Harden. Second by Mr. Harden. Any discussion? Seeing none, call uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Next item on the agenda is ceremonial presentations and awards. So we have two items under that part of the agenda tonight and we have a couple we have a large group here to present and thank as well as another individual uh, so for item 2.1 is the recognition of the traffic control box beautification project student artists and uh, madam mayor if you'd like to give us a little uh, summary of that my thanks to all the artists and to the arts commission who sponsored this um, endeavor so as as you were painting these traffic control boxes and you had people beeping at you and wondering what the heck you were doing um, now to now when you're actually unveiled them and they look so beautiful I hope you are as proud as we are of you and can't thank you enough for um, doing this beautification project for the town of Stratford some of you look like you're heading to the firing line it really won't be painful we're just going to give you <laughs> some little recognition and say your name and if you want to talk a little bit about what your project was, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But um, Council Chair Pia and I will come up to the front, and um, Chairman Fredette from the Arts Commission will join us. So is Mary Carmody here? <laughs> so Mary, were you Highland in Maine and East Maine in Avery? Do you want to tell us a little bit about your boxes? Hi, I'm Mary. Um, so for my first box, I did like a flower scene and the background was dark and then the flowers were like bright. So I just wanted to add a little brightness to the street and lighten up Stratford. And then for my next one, I'm gonna do like fish in the water on the box. And so I hope that will also brighten up people's day when they see it on the street. Thank you, Mary. Is Emily here? Oh, I'm sorry. Emily Suka? Emily, do you want to tell us about your box and where it is? Hi, I'm Emily. Um, my box is by Eli Whitney, so you'll see it. It has a bunch of cats on it. 
And I just love cats, so I painted a bunch of them. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Liliana? So Liliana Hernandez. Oh, I see this one all the time. I love this box. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that one too. Okay. I, I just did like, uh, like a fantasy forest thing. Yeah, sorry. Did you have the, did you have the, um, <laughs> All right, so maybe I'm not remembering exactly which one you did, but why don't you come get the award? <laughs> Congratulations. I'm sorry. Um, Liliana, I thought you were at um, CVS. Okay. <laughs> Is Ashley here? Oh, and I love yours, too, because I got a picture with you guys. So Ashley Vanka did, uh, is at Broadbridge and the entrance to Remington, and I'm going to let you tell everybody what your box is like. Oh. Hi. My box isn't done yet, but when it's done, um, you'll be able to see that it has puzzle pieces on it, and they're all rainbow, and um, they're going to have, like, some smiley faces, some sad faces, some puzzled faces. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of like puzzled emotions, I guess. I thought the name was funny, so that's what I did. And it's pastels, right? Yeah, it's really pretty. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> um, Jojo. How about Grace? Casca? So Grace, you're the one near Holly Lane and CVS, okay. Um, so my box is a Mother Nature scene and it has Mother Nature lying down and her hair and her legs are incorporated into the water and to the trees. It reminded me a little bit when I saw it of you know how Sleeping Giant looks, it's incorporated into the, the landscape and that's what yours remind me of, it's beautiful. Zinnia? Uh, Emily? So Emily, tell us about your box. Um, well, my box is right across from Home Goods, so um, I wanted to kind of show how Stratford is like kind of the town of all seasons, so I did kind of like day and night to kind of show like the difference that it has. So I did a sun on one side that has a face and then a moon on one of the sides to show night, I guess. Great. Well, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> Alyssa Williams? So Alyssa, tell us about your box. <laughs> it's, it's so like, I, tr I tried to capture the essence of dreams by making it very random in, in like the sense of having mice, fish, and boats, and there's, and there's goddesses on all side in like the water, but, 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 al but also having a nice kind of galaxy because dreams are limitless just like the galaxy is. That's what I did for my box. Honey Spot in Sedgwick. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. 
Melissa. And Nina? Is Nina Williams here? Oh, there you are. So tell us about your boxes, right? <laughs> Um, so my first box is on West Broad, and it's a water goddess. Um, I just wanted to add color and life to Stratford, so I painted something pretty and, you know, easy to look at. Um, I actually had the cops called on me while I was painting it. <laughs> <laughs> and, had they, to, and they were very nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call Rich to come save me. But... Um, I have another box on um, Barnum and Bruce that I just finished, and it's just like space with a whole bunch of planets, but the planets have eyes, and it's just broadcasting my own art style and having it represented in Stratford. Oh, and we have a to be to be continued later. <laughs> Did I not call Haley? I'm sorry. My apologies, Haley. Come on up. Or come on down. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your box. My box is essentially just a big Crayola crayon box, you know, with the crayons inside. Because, you know, I just want to do something fun and familiar to everybody. Really cute, you know. Yeah. It is very cute. When, when I saw you painting it, they were just painting the, sh the background colors, so we weren't really sure what was happening. And then when I saw it afterwards, I was a Crayola box crayon for Halloween one year, and it just brought back really great memories, and I love that box, so thank you. Okay, so just the two people who didn't, weren't here, JoJo and Zinnia. Okay. Well, thank you all for, uh, for participating in this and making Stratford more beautiful. We can't see what, what you get to do next. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, that was great. Next item on the agenda is item 2.2, another ceremonial presentation and award for a Dr. Nicholas Bertini, and again, I'll hand it over to the, to the mayor. Is Dr. Bertini here? Yes, I am. Come on up. So Dr. Bertini, we'd like to thank you for your service to the town of Stratford. Uh, Andrea and Bernie, among many others, have spoken so highly of you and your advice and, and your guidance to all of our departments, or not our health department, our school departments, and so we appreciate you very much. And um, in recognition of you, uh, where you have rendered distinctive service to the community of Stratford, as the medical advisor for the Stratford Health Department for 25 years, and you have maintained a steadfast commitment to hear and respond to the concerns of our cl clinicians, <clears throat> and you have given enduring and tireless advocacy on behalf of the town of Stratford for all of its citizens, and you have consistently provided highly competent medical oversight of clinical operations to the town throughout your tenure as the medical advisor, and especially during the most recent global pandemic. Now, therefore, I, the Honorable Laura R. Hoydick, Mayor of Stratford, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby honor and thank Dr. Nicholas Bertini for his tremendous in-kind contribution of time, 
expertise, and willingness to serve the residents of Stratford for more than two decades. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. You're my pleasure. My pleasure. First of all, I've never met a microphone I didn't like, <laughs> but I promise not to sing, because uh, it's not karaoke night tonight, is it? Uh, I moved to this town 37 years ago and uh, reside in the town, and I took over the practice of a physician who was a town doctor. And so that was the, uh, that was the initial um, introduction to my relationship with the town. And I have to say it has been a two-way street because not only do you appreciate what I've done for the town, but I appreciate what the town has done for the growth and development of my practice. I could probably come up with the names of 200 town employees who through the course of my serving the town became patients of mine. And uh, they still to this day are the core of my practice. And so it has been my privilege to care for those people and it's been my honor to serve the town in which I live. So I will continue to live here, but unfortunately since I'm retiring, I can no longer serve as the advisor for the town, but it has been my distinct honor and pleasure to do so. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna uh, continue on here. Just give it one second. Just for the noise. All right, we'll continue on. The next item on the agenda, item 3.1, the monthly TAN report. Uh, Ms. Savo, please. Uh, good, good evening, thank you, uh, Chairman. The report that was in your packet shows the um, updated cash flow report for the town and you'll see on 6 24 the last um, week of the fiscal year for 22 that the cash um, projection is 15.5 million are there any questions any questions for dawn on the tan report no? Okay. I don't Thank see any. You. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, next item on the, on the agenda is the mayor's report. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Chairman. Vaccine equity outreach continues. Our health department sponsored an ice cream social at Gregory Circle, donuts and coffee at the Baldwin Center uh, uh, Senior Housing Complex, and they were held to offer education as well as vaccines. Pop-up clinics were held at Shiloh Gardens. Wednesday afternoons, drop-in COVID vaccines are still, for those still seeking the first or the second doses, continue. And also, we're providing vaccines to residents that are homebound. Once Moderna and the, and the Johnson & Johnson boosters are approved, boosters will also be offered. Based on the above efforts, progress continues in improving vaccination rates, specifically in the census tracts 804, 802, 801, particularly for those over 65. The health department continues to assist in securing and advertising the Griffin Hospital van to provide COVID vaccines at community events as well as school age clinics. Awaiting the vaccine and related biological products advisory meeting, the announcement for the authorization of Moderna's vaccine as a booster shot, the Stratford Health Department is poised to receive the vaccine and vaccinate those eligible at the Bird's Eye Municipal Complex. The committee meets on October 14th to discuss Moderna, and then on October 15th to discuss Johnson & Johnson. COVID case con contact tracing continues, assisting the Board of Education whenever called upon. 
holding COVID conversations with high schools and middle school students have been having, will be happening over the next two weeks. For other health department news, several flu clinics will be held at bird's eye, more is planned. Within, with only 49 days left to hurricane season, Andrea, <laughs> who reminds us, by the way, at every meeting, how many days are left in hurricane season? Stratford Health Department continues to message about how to be prepared and how to improve your resilience. The Stratford Health Department serves as the lead agency for local health preparedness, specifically mass dispensing initiatives in Region 1. They hosted a, a smallpox refresher training course for the MRC volunteers. This was in response to recent reports of the travel acquired monkeypox cases in the US. They completed and submitted the application for reaccreditation. They're developing programs to address increasing rates of STD and hepatitis C. They're implementing action items on the opioid prevention, use prevention work plan designated to reduce overdoses and overdose deaths and to foster community outreach and referral strategies and networks. At this time, the Stratford Health Department is looking for a full-time uh, nurse and RN position, which is on the town's website. The state released information about how many individuals are vaccinated in all Connecticut communities, and as of October 6th, 68.43% of the town's population that is eligible for vaccination, I'd like to clarify that. Um, actually, I'm sorry, 68.3% of the town's entire population, not including, including children who are not eligible to receive, have been vaccinated at the first dose. We are almost out of the orange level for the period of September 19th through October 2nd, and we have an average of 10 point cases per 100,000 people per day. In recent events, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. The town recognized Hispanic Heritage Month with a ceremony on the Town Hall Green on Wednesday, September 15th. I was pleased to join the members of the Hispanic Heritage Committee in ringing in Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs from the 15th of September to October 15th, and the flag of Hispanicity will be, was raised at Town Hall. National Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens who have industry originating in Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, Central, and South America. Many Hispanic residents of Stratford share their art, their music, history, traditions, along with their food, and our community, and it has enhanced our cultural awareness and the vibrancy of Stratford. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and an annual campaign goes on to increase awareness of breast cancer and to promote early detection, diagnosis, and treatment. Too many women do not utilize mammographies at a regular interval, even though the research indicates it is the best available method of detection. Awareness remains central to getting our family, loved ones, and friends to get regular mammograms after age 40. This month, to help promote this critical awareness by we are wearing pink or wearing pink ribbons, We've also been illuminating Town Hall in pink in the evenings in honor of survivors and families impacted by breast cancer. October is also National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Domestic violence is a pattern of coercive controlling behavior that can include physical, emotional, or psychological abuse, sexual abuse, or financial abuse, and or all of the above. It takes a heavy toll on the victims, families, and loved ones. This month, we take the time to celebrate the survivors of domestic abuse, raise awareness of the issue, and to support the many organizations and individuals who provide advocacy and service. One of those organizations is the Center for Family Justice, which is part of the Connecticut Coalition Against Domestic Violence. CFJ has a satellite office at our Bird's Eye Municipal Center. One of their events throughout the month is Purple Thursday, which is October 21st this year. Participating is simple wear purple that day, snap a selfie or a group shot wearing purple, and post it on hashtag Purple Thursday. Be sure to tag the Center of Family Justice. They will also be conducting a vigil on October 24th, and I will be attending with Chief McNeil. It is at the Beardsley Zoo. And on Purple Thursday, we will illuminate Town Hall in purple lights. The Stratford Police Chief was recognized by the Police Commission's Association of Connecticut, Chief Joe McNeil was awarded the Distinguished Chief Award by the Police Chiefs Commissioners, Asso Commissioners Association of Connecticut at their 2021 Distinguished Chiefs Emeritorious Service Awards Dinner 
held September 29th at Pisano's Four Seasons. Chief McNeil, who has served the Stratford's chief since 2016, began his service with the Stratford Police Department in 1994. Chief McNeil rose to the ranks, serving as patrolman, detective sergeant, lieutenant, cap lieutenant, captain, and deputy chief prior to being named chief. His tenure as chief of police has been distinguished by decreasing crime rates and a groundbreaking community engagement program for officers and citizens, which has become a national model for departments across the United States, working to build trust and empathy between police officers and community members. Chief. On September 29th, we held the official reopening and celebration of the just completed renovations and, and upgrades at the Baldwin Center facility for seniors and for the greater community. The Baldwin Center hosted up to 1,500 visitors weekly before the pandemic. So what do we call it, the Great Reveal? It was a name, Tammy. Extreme Makeover. Extreme makeover. Well done, Tammy. <laughs> Roughly 150 visitors were present, including Councilor Bill O'Brien, State Senator Kevin Kelly, State Representatives Joe Gresko and Phil Young, Judge of Probate Mac, Max Rosenberg, and former sec Second District Council, Counselor Ron Tickey, who was instrumental in advocating for the renovations. Members of the family of Raymond E. Baldwin, former Governor and Chief Justice of Connecticut, for whom the center is made, and whose picture is hanging in, on the wall there, um, they were also in attendance. The renovation includes new flooring, new fixtures, updated restrooms, fresh painted walls, and new furniture. Many of the program rooms are now outfitted with video monitors to enhance presentations by staff and community. There are new boilers and more for more efficient heating, a new elevator in full service, and the offices have been refreshed and redesigned to maximize work area efficiency. Downstairs, a more spacious game room has been created by removing a wall between the ping pong room and an adjacent smaller room. Many, many thanks are deserved for the hard work on this project, particularly Renee Serra, Director of Public Works, and Tammy Trojanowski, Director of Community and Senior Services, and for all of the hard work that your staff put in. Thank you both. It was a thrill to join the blessing of the new Ruby and Calvin Fletcher African American Museum at 952 East Broadway last month. Jeffrey Fletcher, owner of the African American Collections, has a terrific vision and passion for this new endeavor in partnership with the town, and we are thrilled to be working alongside with him to realize this new museum. The museum is tentatively to open late this month. Last month, I was honored to speak at a brief ceremony held at Christ Episcopal Church Historical Cemetery with Reverend Pat Collar, Bishop Diocese of the uh, Bishop, Bishop Diocesan of Episcopal Church of Connecticut, E.N.T. Douglas, members of the Stratford Clergy Association, the First Baptist Church, local dignitaries as we honor the memory of former slaves known as Frile, Nellie, Jane, and Prince, who were buried in unmarked graves on the grounds. A monument in their honor has been placed at the location, which is fitting consideration the Episcopal Church's and Stratford's role in the abolitionist movement and the Underground Railroad. Special thanks to Ethan and Barbara Stewart for completing the research that allowed us to honor Frile, Nellie, Jane, and Prince in their final resting place. Another thanks to Pat Collar and the Christ Episcopal Church for organizing this important recognition and for all that who attended the ceremony. It was thrilling to be on hand a week ago Friday afternoon at Sikorsky with the federal, state, and military officials to celebrate the delivery of the first King Stallion heavy lift helicopter. Stratford is proud of its connection with Sikorsky and their tradition of providing first-class aircraft, particularly for our armed forces in defense of our nation. Sikorsky will produce 200 of these CH-53K helicopters over the next 15 years. Congratulations, Sikorsky. I was pleased to be paid a visit by Stratford's own Captain Jim Morgia and his daughter Janine. Jim turned 99 years old last week. He is a World War II veteran who is active in town and the author of three incredible books. Jim was awarded the Silver Star in World War II, serving at E Company, 334th 
Infantry, Infantry Re Regiment, the 84th Infantry Division for cons cons conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity. Intre intrepidity, intrepid in action against the enemy, I think is what it would sh should read. For the commanding officer of the Battle of Bejo, Belgium, during the Battle of the Bulge in January of 1945. Jim raised five children here in Stratford and has worked as a chemical engineer at Sikorsky Aircraft until his retirement in, in the 80s. Stratford's ha Household Hazardous Collection Waste Day will be held on October 30th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m at Stratford Public Works Yard on 550 Patterson Avenue. Stratford Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day is free of charge to Stratford residents. A valid Stratford resident sticker must be presented at this entrance prior to offloading materials. To obtain a resident sticker prior to the event, please contact the Stratford Recreation Department at 468 Birdseye Street or via the phone 203-385-4052. Stratford is one of the limited numbers of communities in Connecticut to offer this, uh, this waste disposal. It is critical that our residents have a safe and easy way to dispose of their household hazardous waste. The list of acceptable items is available online. Our farmer's market continues to happen at Paradise Green on Mondays from 2 to 6 p.m. The Shakespeare Market continues on the grounds of Shakespeare property and its twice monthly outdoor food and craft market will continue through this month. The Pumpkin Festival, as part of their Celebrate series, is happening this Saturday, October 16th at Booth Memorial Park. A, a shuttle is available from Flood Middle School parking lot. This year features pumpkin carving, a costume parade, DJ, food prizes, entertaining, and balloon sculptures. More information is available at boothmemorialpark.org. On um, uh, Friday, October 22nd, Perry House will be holding a Perry Hollows celebration at the historical Perry House located at 1128 West Broad Street. That'll start at 5 o'clock and it ends approximately at 9. The cost is $65 a person, includes dinner, drinks, and entertainment. The Shakespeare Renaissance Festival is scheduled for Sunday, October 28th, 10 to 4 at Shakespeare Park. Hot food, live games, music, vendors will all be present. The cost is $15 for an adult and $10 for youth. The Connecticut Air and Space Center will be holding a military show on Saturday, October 16th. There's a lot going on that day. 12.30 p.m. featuring uh, vehicles, aircraft, reenactors, and vendors. The cost is $10 for adults, $5 for kids, six and over. Veterans are admitted free. The flood insurance forum, we will be conducting two insurance forums the first on October 19th, which is a Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Birdseye Municipal Complex, and Wednesday, October 20th, 1 p.m. At, at Baldwin Center. Experienced insurance agents will be on hand to discuss topics related to flood insurance. Discover Strange Stratford tours are being advertised on the town website, and tickets are on sale for October 24th and 31st tours, tours. Ticket sales will go towards Booth Memorial Park, Stratford Historical Society, and Perry House. The tours will begin at Perry House. Tickets are selling quickly. The Police Activities League will be holding a paint night. The fundraiser is on Friday, November 12th at Riverview Bistro. Cocktail hour is at four o'clock and painting starts at six. I'm pleased to offer my volunteer services as a guest bartender and I won't be doing cash register so you don't have to worry about the correct change for that evening and to support a good work, all the good work PAL does. You can register for the event at www.stratfordpal.com. The Army Engine Plant, the final draft of the steward, stewardship permit was issued to the developer of Record Point Stratford Renewal. The anticipated property conveyance from the Army to the developer is December 13th of 2021. We have waited more than two decades to see positive ac economic activity on this site, and we are looking forward to an improved development for our town. I look forward to working with the developer and with the town's boards and commissions to see that it is just so. Center School, we are waiting for the appraisal of the property at which time the two developers chosen by the subcommittees will provide the information so they can reflect their appraisal price into their financial stack. Once this information with the developers has been provided, it will be shared with the town council. Contract plating, the plans to be marketed within the upcoming weeks. 
There was a sale of 30 and 120 Moffett Street industrial property sold for more than $11 million. The sale of 85 Mead Street, the tenant is Sunbelt Rentals, industrial property sold for $8 million, five times the appraised value. Thanks to the partnership between the Town of Stratford and Sterling House Community Center, the Stratford Community Calendar online resources will be updated with all events happening in town. If your event is open to the entire Stratford community and we want to know about it, this includes municipal events and events hosted by licensed community organizations and businesses. Timeline for the launch is prior to the end of the month. A press release will go out shortly. We had some business openings this month. We had Welcome to the Care Connection by Stratford VNA. I was th thrilled to join the team by Care Connection and the Stratford VNA to celebrate the opening this week. Care Connection is a non-medical home care provider offering 24-7 home care solutions serving Fairfield County and New Haven counties. Their caregivers offer a range of services designed to manage the challenges of day-to-day -day life for our clients so we can they can enjoy a more independent and better quality of life. Their mission is to provide high quality affordable home care that allows our loved ones to lead dignified and independent lives in the comfort and safety of their own homes. Care Connection is located at 3060 Main Street. Nikki's Beach House, which has been operating all summer at their lo location at One Dorn Drive, um, had a ribbon cutting, and we finally got the opportunity to celebrate the opening, which included fabulous pizza and a grab-and-go section near the golf course with Nikki Capozo Hennessy and her great team. Please come down and check them out. Their, fresh, their feature fresh seafood is delivered daily. They have pizzas, calzones, full-service bars, signature, signature co cocktails, and a brunch menu every Sunday from 11 to 2 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Questions for the mayor? Anything for the council? Greg? Um, thank, you, Chair thank you, Chairman Pia. Um, mayor Hoydick, uh, the conveyance of the Army engine plant to the developer, you mentioned December. Uh, what are the next milestones following that conveyance? The developer, after the property is conveyed to them, will work with the town departments for whatever permitted applications are required. Any other questions for the mayor? Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Kaylin. Sorry. Um, thank you so much. Mayor Hoydick, um, I have a question regarding, if you could just reiterate what the fully vaccinated rate is of our residents here. Currently. The fully vaccinated rate reported by the Department of Public Health for the entire population of 52,000, not those eligible to receive the vaccine, is 68.43%. Any other questions from counselors? No? Okay. Thank you all. Next item on the agenda is item uh, under committee reports, item 4.3.1. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Sign. I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.1A under Stratford High Renovations Turner Change Order 325 in the amount of $43,541. Motion by C Councilor sure. Poisson. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Uh, Mr. Connor. Thank you, sir. Discussion on the item? Greg? Um, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the, the minutes of building needs doesn't describe what day two items are. Could we get some examples? Day two items in the uh, construction business uh, refer to stuff that happens after day one when you realize, and I'm not trying to be funny, it's what it is. Uh, when you realize we should have done this or we should have done that, we could have do this a little better. There's stuff that needs to still be finished, uh, that Turner still has to stick around and, and finish. And these costs were vetted by the Stratford High Renovations Committee and the Building Needs Committee. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? 
No opposed, motion passes 9-0. Next item. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.1B, the award of town bid 2022-015 for the bird's eye roof in the amount of $763,000. Motion by Councilor Poisson, do I have a second? Second. Uh, second by Mr. Connor, I heard. Uh, discussion on the item? Um, anybody here that have a question on it from minutes? No? Okay. Call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Uh, Mr. Town Attorney 4.4, .4, Mr. Attorney Hodgson. Thank you, Chair. I have a brief report for the month of September. Fees, costs recovered for real estate and sewer tax foreclosures, $3,075. For property damage claims uh, to town property, approximately $6,300 recovered. For blight liens, we recovered approximately $6,900. We paid out uh, four WPCA sewer backup and property damage claims uh, in the amount of $20,000. And uh, we opened up five property damage claims uh, for, for town property uh, to be resolved. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Hodgson. Um, next item on the agenda will be item 6.2.1. Under resolutions, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, 6.2.1 resolution regarding 2021 Connecticut Department of Energy Environmental Protection Grant for the creation of watershed based plan for Bruce Creek, Bruce Brook. Motion uh, by Councillor uh, O'Brien, Sec second by Mr. Hardin. Uh, do I have any uh, discussion on the item? Uh, this I'm sorry. <coughs> Councilor Connor, for the record, Councilor Connor made the motion. I apologize on my slip. Thank you. And I have Mr. Hardin on the second. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, any discussion or questions uh, for the grant? Uh, Greg? Thank you, Chris. I'll, um, I'll call Kelly up if, uh, if you'd like to come up, Kelly. And that way, if there's any specific, you can answer and take some credit for working on this. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. Hi, Kelly. Uh, just a little background on, you know, there, there was an article in the Connecticut Post, and it had a picture from 2016 of um, one of our associates, you know, standing next to the dirty brook. So when did we, how do we go about making an, uh, identifying a need and then making applications for grants so that we can initiate the cleanup? M meaning if we, if we knew about this back in at least 2016. Greg, if you'd like to come up to if we If we knew the brook was dirty longer than 2016, it's been, anyway, how, when, how did we initiate the grant? <clears throat> Kelly, can you take us through the process of how this, uh, you and Greg, how it was written and applied for? So Kelly, before you start, if, 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 you may, Mr. Chair, if I may, Mr. Chair. You may, Madam Mayor. So this process has been going on a long time, identifying that the um, environmental contaminants in this brook, it is not just since 2016, Councillor. It has been ongoing for a long time. We have worked very closely with the city of Bridgeport as well as the diocese, of the Catholic diocese, uh, to go through this. Um, and it was just very fortuitous that our two colleagues here um, our grant writer and our conservation superintendent um, found this grant opportunity for us. So go ahead, Kelly. Thank you. Okay. Could, could you just explain what you mean by implementing the grant? I just... Oh, uh, I mean, I, I concur with the mayor's point that the uh -huh. brook's been dirty much longer than, uh -huh. but at least the town was cognizant of it. So I, that's why I benchmark it 2016. Uh, so we, we have the grant, it's mm -hmm. great news. We're gonna start a cleanup in cooperation with the other entities, great news. Uh, is it typical that it would take this, this long to get to the point of achieving the funding to start the evaluation? Right, um, so since I started with the town in August of 2019, and since that time we have been meeting, although we've had a brief hiatus due to COVID-related restrictions. We've been meeting with the city of Bridgeport 
um, along with our blight officer, health director, and her colleagues um, regularly, m almost every other week, um, to track down sources of pollution in Bruce Brook. And uh, I believe the city of Bridgeport, uh, namely, they did find, I want to say, almost a dozen illicit connections to Bruce Brook that have been disconnected. So we have already been um, tracking down sources of pollution. And then on the town side, we've also um, been conducting some dye testing um, to confirm connections to the sanitary uh, sewer. Um, and we have tracked down some illicit connections on our end as well. So we've already been implementing some of the portions of this, but this is going to formalize a plan um, moving forward. And it will also open the door for additional funding through this section 319 um, opportunity as well. Does that answer your question? OK. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Right. Yep. And, no problem. and Greg, do you have anything further to add? Okay. I took Kelly's lead. We put it together and very happy to bring Kate through. Yeah, I concur to the two of you. And to, as you mentioned, Kelly, there's been a lot of work on this for health department, everything, and, and thank you for staying on it. It's a long time coming, and we appreciate it. Any other further discussion? Mr. Chairman? Mr. O'Brien. Uh, Laura Dancho was unable, unable to attend tonight due to illness, and she wanted to pass on congratulations to you. And I'll add also, Greg Riley, congratulations on this. And I think the original plan was to get 85000 but you got 30000 more. How did you manage that? Um, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we applied for about eighty five, and we got one fifteen. Um, they recognized that we had additional needs, so pretty proud of that. And also... When this finally gets cleaned up, do you think it will help relieve some of the flooding issues in that area? I, I do hope so. Um, that this plan should identify um, not only some contaminant issues, but perhaps some flow issues as well. And there are some, we ha I have been working with um, our engineer, John Casey. Um, he has been initiating some projects to alleviate some flooding as well. Um, they're somewhat tied up in FEMA right now, but I'm hoping that some of that will um, come out of this plan as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other further discussion on the item? Seeing none, we'll call it for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Next item on the agenda uh, is item 6.2.2. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. O'Brien. I move uh, the resolution regarding Connecticut Department of Energy and an environmental protection grant for funding the purchase of a 2022 diesel snowplow truck to replace a 20, 2002 diesel snowplow truck. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. O'Brien. Do I have a second? Second, second by Mr. Connor. Uh, any discussion? I'll just, I'll just ask Mr. Timiak actually to come up or maybe Renee. I'm sorry, I didn't see Renee. Hi, Renee, if you could come up, Public Works Director. My question is simple. Um, this is going to require 100, about 135000 in matching from the town. Where are we planning on taking that from CIP? Or if we could just elaborate on that, that was my question. Yes, this is going to come out of the CIP money. Question. Um, Mr. Tavares. Good evening, Renee. What, what, what will happen with the, uh, with the old truck? Is it, will it be sold? Will it be, what, what's, what's the situation of that? It'll be presented at an auction. And the, the proceeds from that go back into um, the fund, into the, the capital funds to pay down principal and Good. stuff. Thank like you. That. Any other discussion on this item? No? Thank you, Renee. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Next item I have is 6.2.3. I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Councillor Perillo. Do I have a second on that? Second, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Councillor Hardin. Um, any discussion on this? And maybe Chief or Greg Riley on the grant for the police? Chief McNeil, if you'd like to just quickly explain it. Good evening. This is the uh, de escalation? Yes, Chief. Uh, I apologize. No. Highway Safety Project Grant for Stratford Police Reimbursement for Distracted Driving Enforcement Program. Uh, Lieutenant Ariel Leone is my division um, CO. This is going to be for targeted for distracted driving. We run four hour blocks. And so 
this is, uh, we did not do it last year. This year we're starting it up again because as you know, to see a problem out there. This is gonna cover all the overtime costs associated with uh, enforcement. We're gonna start running that as, and as soon as we get, uh, go ahead to do that. Excellent. Um, any discussion? I'll, how, how long will this go for, approximately? It's gonna run uh, the last two weeks of October, the first wave, and then the four weeks in April. Thank you, sir. Greg? Thank you, Chris. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, high visibility enforcement. Um, how's that different from regular enforcement? It's part of the description. The way this grant, uh, we're expected to run it is to run two officers at the same time. <coughs> one, one officer will be the spotter, and then the second officer will conduct the motor vehicle stop. Um, so it's, it's intended to catch people who are distracted on their phones or uh, by other means. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Mr. O'Brien. I have a special request. One of my pet peeves are drivers with a dog in their lap. Please crack down on that. <laughs> to me, that's more dangerous than driving with a phone. Really, it is. I'm, I'm really surprised the animal rights people haven't jumped all over that, but it, it is, I see it too often. So I'd like to see some enforcement on that. He has a pet peeve. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Any other discussion? <laughs> Thank you, officers. Thank you. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Under new business, we have one appointment this evening, item 7.1.1. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. O'Brien. Mr. Connor, I apologize, sir. I'd like to make a... Uh, make a Resolve to Deidre McNeil of El Terris be uh, assigned to, appointed to the beautiful beautification community and replacing this resigned seat of Cynthia Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Do I have I'll a second? Seconded second by Ms. Uh, Ms. Shake. Uh, any discussion on that? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Shake. Um, I just want it to be known for the record that uh, Ms. Deirdre McNeil, she overwhelmingly um, and enthusiastically showed up for our fall Longbrook Park cleanup. Um, and it, at her own um, direction, she was able to help several groups with the beautifications, generous donation of the 200 daffodils to figure out where it would be best that they would be planted. And she went above and beyond and went back to her house to get um, some of the nutrients that would be needed for the soil. So, you know, on her own, she was just so excited and happy. And um, she is also, I believe, one of the recipients of the Beautifications Awards recently. So I wish her all the best. Thank you. We appreciate her, her stepping forward. Um, any other discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll call that for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Thank you. Uh, motion passes 9-0. Before we adjourn, I'm going to, before we adjourn, I'm going to uh, give the floor to uh, Council Tavares for a moment um, out of courtesy for a personal request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just as the mayor alluded to about uh, October being um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, we men also should be vigilant with uh, our situations. Um, for the last 20 years, I've had prostate uh, issues. This past April, uh, after taking a, quite a turn, my PSA, which is the prostate-specific antigen, which um, is an enzyme that's produced to show the health of the prostate was three times its level. So after a battery of tests, uh, I've been uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer. So uh, I wanted to keep this quiet, but after this past weekend and some of the phone calls I've gotten, I felt, and again, with the um, being a Cancer Awareness Month for women, as we uh, encourage them to get checked, um, that's one of the reasons why I chose not to uh, run for reelection. Um, I have to devote as much time as possible to uh, deal with this. Um, I just wanted to say for the record that I'm not quitting. Um, 
my friends on the other side have not run me out, even though some of you have been the most deplorable people I've ever met. But I take that as a challenge because even with that, we still got things done. And I appreciate the fact that I was able to work with some of my friends on the other side and even my colleagues. So uh, I just implore all men, especially uh, men of African American descent to uh, get your PSAs, get your prostate exams. Believe me, I don't send my urologist flowers each time he gives me the exam. <laughs> it's a few seconds of discomfort, but believe me, it's worth that than having a lifetime of regret. So I implore all men over 50 to uh, go to your doctors, get yourself checked out. Um, so I didn't want to run because in this case I did win and something would happen. I didn't want the town to incur an expense of a special election or I just needed this time to, to deal with myself. So um, I'm still involved in organizations that help this town. And as the good Lord gives breath in my body, I'm still going to be active. I enjoy being a pain to some of you. So now that I know that that is the case, I plan to be even more so of a pain. Uh, that was a joke. <laughs> but um, I just, like I said, I, I'm not quitting. I'm just um, allowing my term to run out so that I can concentrate on this. I'm still a father and still a husband and I'm still a Stratfordite. Um, so uh, listen, I'm like Arnold, I'll be back, but I need the time to uh, deal with this issue. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your words this morning. It was very hard for me to call and ask for this. And uh, again, all those that I work with, I, I really appreciate it. You made this uh, such a pleasure. And um, you know, I, I plan on beating this thing. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, and you. I think I speak for the entire council and the mayor's office that we wish you and your family the best and, and uh, health here. Thank so, you. thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilor Poisson. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Hart. And all those in favor? Aye. Thank you all. We're adjourned at 857.